Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop and in this video I'm showing you how I converted up my Inquisitorial Enforcer. Now this character of Manfred Wilhelm I kind of devised and was loosely based on one of the characters in Sharp. Now this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial but just showing you the finished model and talking you through how I converted him and kitbashed lots of different elements to create a completely unique character. Now if you're familiar with Ink 28 then this level of kit bashing will be quite familiar to you. However, it'll be a good guide for some of you if you've never heard of it before or if you're just interested in terms of how I created the model. So let's begin. The base model is based on the Palantine Enforcers from Necromunda, which is the main body. The head has come from one of the Garrick Reavers models, which is a Shadespire warband. I basically just took off the top knot and then I've scarred up the face slightly along with removing a portion of the ear. Now this head matches the torso that I used on my demon host so I had the head going spare without having to cut up another model and it seemed really appropriate to use it here. So adding the head on was relatively straightforward and from there I decided to modify the model ever so slightly so I decided to take off the banding that was on the right shoulder and then I just used some of the Forge World etched brass to add in an Imperial Aquila. Now these are fantastic little bits for conversion but they're now out of production and really hard to find. You can get them on eBay but unfortunately they're not very cheap. If you can get your hands on them these are fantastic for adding just those little bits of detail here and there. Next up I did a slight conversion on the pistol. I was really undecided about whether to keep the original pistol which is what you see here or modify it to be a bolt pistol a bit more kind of law accurate for 40k. So I decided to keep it in there but what I wanted to do is the original model is holding a torch underneath which obviously makes sense for a police officer slash enforcer but for this guy it doesn't really make sense for him. If I remember rightly, I just carefully cut out the torch from the hand, rotated the hand around so it was facing palm upwards, and then it just applied some green stuff underneath just to fill out the wrist. Now this isn't too clean just here, but that's fine because it's underneath the model, so for most people it won't be visible. So next up was the shoulder mounted storm bolter. So these are two of the Palantine Enforcers bolters. Just carefully trimmed down on one side each and stuck together. Now you can see that I actually cut the bolter in half here. That wasn't something I needed to do. So I ended up gluing it back together again. But once that's painted that won't be visible. And then in terms of making a shoulder mount. I basically drilled a hole down into the shoulder and used a tiny portion of a broken heavy stubber which is the death court of Krieg ones so the vents here is a circular piece going down into the model but of course you could just create that out of plasticard quite easily enough and then you can see I've just added on some extra detail to help mount those storm bolters onto that shoulder mount. Then if we go around the back you can see I've done some extra detail. So I've done an ammo feed belt along with an ammo box. Now these are two items I actually scratch built and then cast up in resin. So for the ammo belt I scratch built this out of plasticard first of all. So there was basically one long strip of plasticard going all the way down. And then I've used tiny strips of plasticard wrapping around this bigger piece. So that creates all of this kind of banding detail. And then in addition to that I've used my RP Tools Rivet Maker. And that allows me to make these tiny, tiny rivets. So... I've just carefully created all of them and glued them in place. And to help with the placement, I carefully stuck a strip of masking tape all the way down this side, just very thinly, which would help guide me in terms of the placement of those rivets. So hopefully they will be lined up together quite neatly. But I am essentially eyeballing it. There's no measuring going on at this sort of scale. It's a bit too difficult. And then lastly on the back I just carefully scored out using a knife and then an etching tool just to carefully create some back detail which then wraps around the side ever so slightly. And then you can see just about where I've done a tiny indentation onto the side of that banding. 
And then the grey stuff that you can see is some of the Tamiya putty, which is a slight filler. So that's just to tidy up some of the breaks that occurred when I was bending this plastic around. Because I was doing it very quickly, I was doing a cold bend, which is where you don't heat up the plastic at all. And then when you apply the plastic cement, I sometimes find that that just creates a snap on that kind of corner piece. So I just applied some Tamiya putty, which I then sanded down just to create that piece. And as I mentioned, plastic can't bend very well, so the kind of U-shape bend that I needed to create can only be done with resin. So I created a mould out of silicone and then cast it up in resin, which then gave me my final piece. And then I could heat that up with my hot air gun and I could create the bend that goes all the way around. At the moment, this ammo belt is detachable, so I can take it out and paint it up separately and then paint all of this detail much easier. And then I can add this to the model at the very end. For the ammo box, I did a similar method, scratch building it out of different bits of plastic card and also like etching on some extra detail. And once I had cast it up, I had added in some extra details such as the rivets on the side. With those bits completed, I then worked on the leg details. On the knee pad, I added in some skull detail. Now this was some detail I had found on another model and I just made a press mold using blue stuff and then green stuff to create the cast, which once set, I could slice thinly and glue to the knee pad. On the right leg, I decided to create a leg brace. Now for this, I used different pieces of styrene. On the top section, I used two different thin strips of different sizes. For the lower section, I used two small styrene rods that go side by side. And then for the middle bit and the bottom bit, I used my different RP tool punch and die sets to create some circular and hexagonal rivets which I could then just stack on to each other and glue together and then add that to the model. So this adds a really nice bit of thematic detail showing his age similar to how Eisenhorn as he gets older requires leg braces as well. Some of the last bits of detail that I wanted to add to Manfred I wanted to add on this little narrative that he is bald and wears a wig but takes the wig off during battle, so he looks more fearsome when he is fighting, which is a reference to the character Sweet William in the TV show Sharp. So for this, I decided to sculpt a wig out of green stuff and add it to a GW skull. This was quite simple to do, but quite a few people have expressed an interest in a tutorial in terms of how I've made it, so I'll save that for another video. But you can see here it's mounted to the belt to show that he carries around his wig with him even when he's not wearing it on his head. And next to it is a tiny reliquy box which was gifted to me by a friend from their bits box. And I just trimmed down some of the detail and used a tiny bit of chain link to create a little hoop for it to attach on the belt. And then I've got some knife detail. Now the bottom part of the sheath is made up from an Astra Militarum Cadian kit. It's just part of their war gear. But I've trimmed off the majority of the detail. And the handle piece is from one of the Grey Knight books. The books that have the swords going through them. So it's just the top part of one of those. And I've added it onto this dagger. So it just makes it look like his weaponry is a bit more unique to him than just having a standard dagger handle. And then the last bits of detail are the purity seals. So I put one on his knee because obviously his knee's quite injured and bashed up. So he's got that on there. And I've got one on his belt for himself. And then lastly, there's one on his storm bolter. Now these purity seals were quite straightforward. The very bottom piece is just from a piece of foil. Now the foil I've got here, I think was either from like some kind of Nutella, jam jar or yogurt pot. Now it's just the lid. So the foil was quite textured. So I've just kind of pressed down on it to try and smooth that out. And then I've just cut a very fine strip off. And you can see it's very thin, but still quite flexible and still quite stiff. So those bits of foil, which I could then scratch up with a knife, could become the parchment. For these ones, I just glued it directly down onto the model, and they are nice and secure. For this one up here, because it's freestanding, it can bend quite a bit. So what I did is I just carefully applied some super glue to the very back, and I built that up over several layers to help stiffen it up, because what I don't want to do is accidentally 
suspend that piece while picking up and playing the model and at some point for that to break off. When it came to creating the wax piece I just took a small bit of green stuff, rolled it into a ball and put it down on a smooth surface. So for this I used a steel ruler because once that green stuff has set I can easily peel off that green stuff from that steel ruler quite easily. Whereas if you were to do it on your cutting mat I think you would struggle because it would stick down to that cutting mat much more easier. So all I had to do was squish that ball down into a flat disc and then shape it slightly by using some sculpting tools to kind of create a little kind of rounded edge, a bit like the crust on a pizza dough, but still make sure there's a tiny bit of detail just in the middle to give it that wax seal effect. And then lastly, there's one additional ammo pouch, which comes as standard in the Palantine Enforcer kit. So that is this model complete and how I created Manfred Wilhelm. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial video and that's all for this video. If you'd like to see more on my inquisitorial retinue that I've been creating there is a playlist already with some videos in it and there will be a couple more to still come. Thanks for watching, feel free to stick around while I plug a few things. If you'd like to get hold of the ammo belts featured in this video you can get them from my store over on beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop where I sell a bunch of resin conversion kits. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join me over on Patreon or use my Element Games affiliate link and promo code when you buy your Warhammer products. You'll find links for those down in the description below. The next video will be out in a few weeks' time. You can subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, or not, the choice is yours. Feel free to follow me over on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook for regular updates with what I'm working on. And if you're interested in more Ink28 conversions, there's that playlist over in the top left hand corner. That's all for now. Until the next time, take care.